Sooner Scoop HD. All right, good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. All right, everybody's <laughs> present today. Um, uh, coming off a uh, again a uh, one of our two games this year that we lost by by a score, uh, having a chance to uh, win the game in the fourth quarter, uh, weren't good enough to to get it done. Uh, again, incredibly proud of our guys for uh, their effort, their fight, uh, the toughness to to keep themselves in position to win the game uh, despite uh, doing the things that you can't do to to win a game, uh, whether it's turning the ball over. Um, Having you know more penalties, uh, getting out rushed in the game, and not being as efficient as we need to be on on fourth down, still have a chance to to uh, to to uh, beat again uh, a Baylor. Uh, you know we're, this is about improvement. Uh, we we still got a lot of things that we have to continue to improve on. There, uh, believe it or not, even through uh, a loss, there's a lot that. Um, that was actually good in the game. Um, uh, yesterday took some time to make sure that we recognize uh, what those things are and uh, you know things that you can build on. Again, this is, you look at it, again, a, a game that's, uh, uh, there's some moments of frustration because of, again, just uh, how, how um, uh, you know, delicate the game is. And when you, again, or in position to win and uh, just weren't able to get it done, uh, you try to find, again, the, the things that you can build upon. And, uh, again, we looking at, uh, you know, the opportunities that are sitting in front of us right now to finish the year that we, how we want to finish it. Um, we, we still got a great opportunity, you know, this week uh, going to, to Morgantown to, uh, to again, not, not dwell on, uh, you know, the things that, well, we didn't do well last week, but really to, to, to look at the opportunity, you know, uh, as, a, as an opportunity of its own this week to try to create some momentum, momentum to finish the season the right way, uh, in a positive way, and uh, get to a bowl game and uh, continue to create momentum for the out of season uh, as well. Uh, you know, the areas where we're, we're, we're playing really well right now, obviously we have, we have experience there. And the areas where we're not, you know, we're, uh, we're making, we're, we're inconsistent. And uh, part of that is there's, there's probably a lot of reasons, but one of it, again, you're looking at guys that haven't played a ton of football uh, at some spots. So uh, that matters at the end of the day. And, um, you know, we got to continue to uh, bring guys along and develop things the right way, um, being faithful again to the little things. Our players got a lot invested. The coaches got a lot invested. And even through, uh, again, uh, adversity or, or losing, uh, you don't just lose that investment or uh, lose that focus about what it's all about. You know, you got to accept everything that comes with it when, when you're completely in, invested. And sometimes it's easy to sit outside and, and judge and say, well, again, the season, you lose, uh, you lose your fourth game and, you know, everything, you know, the season's over. You know, that's, that's one way to look at it. Like, to me, that to me, if you, if you if you judge it that way, then you just like when bad things happen in life, you just kind of pack it in, and that doesn't when when you invested uh, invest like like you invest in the game of football or any sport, uh, you don't just uh, you're, you're you're it's about the chase, it's about the commitment to one another, it's about the love for what you do, and um, even through the discouragement, you you accept everything that comes with it, and and so that's what this is about, you know, challenging uh, our guys, you know. Every player and every coach through all of it, you know, you, you, everybody's got to look at themselves. And, you know, uh, again, to me, that's when you, you got to be at your best. So our guys came back yesterday, had a great perspective. I think the perspective, you know, I think the perspective is what it's all about. And, and, and being able to, uh, because I think it drives you know, your perspective, it always drives your performance. And so uh, if you got to, uh, if you got a, a bad perspective, you're going to have a bad performance moving forward. So I think having the right perspective uh, right now is more important, uh, as important as it's been all year, uh, so that, again, we can, um, again, realize uh, the potential uh, of our team and, and, again, continue to improve and, and have the kind of finish, you know, that, that, uh, that we want. Uh, you brought up uh, fourth downs, and I want to ask you just broadly mm -hmm. how you've seen the 
attitude toward going forward on fourth down evolve over the last few years and over your time as a coach? You know, obviously Baylor had success, has had success with it all year. West Virginia's converted at a high, had a high percentage rate. How have you seen that change, and how much does analytics play into it? And uh, what are some of the other reasons you think? Yeah, I think I mean it goes without saying. I think the analytics are uh, are something that's whatever, whenever it's come out, uh, where people are, are using it a lot. You know, ten years ago they weren't doing that, so um, they're a company uh, was formed uh, by some coaches and and started really looking at um, the impact of those analytics and. And again, there's you gotta have a lot of courage and boldness and, and ability uh, to be able to execute, you know, in those situations. And you got to live with the results as well. It doesn't always work out great. You watched uh, Ole Miss and Alabama a uh, year before last. I remember watching that game, and they were, we're going to go for it all these fourth downs, and they got destroyed because uh, the other team was prepared, you know, and uh, put themselves and they and it got destroyed quickly. Uh, the game was over quickly. Uh, because of you know a bunch of short fields, so again every every week's different. The matchups are different. The analytics change from week to week uh, based on matchups and the ability on uh, the different units on both teams and things of that nature. Uh, you know, if uh, you know you're a much better team, uh, you know, than the opponent you're playing. You know, they they tell you to punt it more than go for it. Uh, but when things are more evenly matched, or maybe you're outmatched, the an analytics are uh, very, very aggressive, and you got to be, you know. So literally, the way a, a, a uh, an example of the way it works is at the beginning of the drive is when you got to decide. All right, here we go. P and ten balls at the minus thirty-eight. It says the book says seven, so fourth and seven on your own, uh, whatever that would be, your own minus forty-two. Uh, are you willing to go for it on fourth and seven, first drive of the game? Literally, that I'm giving you an example of what the analytics will say, and uh, so uh, you got to know whether or not you're willing to uh, allow your, you know, uh, philosophy to to be aggressive. Then on third and ten, you know, you know, hey, we're we're going to go. It's going to treat it like third and medium, uh, uh, and you know, see, you know, where the fourth down lies. So, uh, and then be willing to go through with it. You know, not change your mind. You know, that's what the analytics people tell you. So uh, it's been good, you know, for the p teams that have uh, chosen to go that route uh, on a couple of the teams that you just said. And, uh, you know, I'd be interested in seeing the teams that, you know, um, that it hasn't worked out well for, you know. So uh, I think it, it can go both ways. Tough to balance that. Yeah. Analytics versus just... Yeah, I think I think yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of different things that go into it where you're like that don't make any sense, uh, you know. But uh, the analytics say it does. But maybe uh, you know. Again, I don't all the different scenarios. There's a, there's a gazillion scenarios that you can go through uh, that you would say absolutely not. We're not doing that here. Um, and some of it too is based on you know what your success has been uh, too. You know, you have your opportunities to. Are you able to? Uh, come up with things that are um, make it difficult too. You know, they're just not just going for it. Like, I think the best teams are the ones that uh, they got a lot of different presentations. It's not you know, they don't go with oh this is our you know uh, you know I got the crossover fade away whatever and that's my, that's my go-to. You can't just do that on all the fourth downs. You got to have uh, people are too good. So you got to have you know lots of change ups. You know you got to have a lot you know uh, in your 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 uh, rolodex. Uh, is what I would say, and to be effective consistently. Uh, that's what Baylor does. They do a nice job uh, with, again, first of all, they got a very experienced, physical, uh, talented offensive line. You know, uh, you know that's, that's one thing that they do that's really well, and they come at you with all different kinds of ways. They're not just running the inside zone. Eric Bailey. Mm -hmm. uh, last time. You were here a couple times, 2005, 2009. You had at least three losses at this time of year. Both those teams finished strong, winning three of their four last four games. Do you remember how Coach Stoops handled those situations to help the team, guide the team to that strong finish? And how much can you relate what you learned as an assistant to what you're going through now? Yeah, you team? know, mindset and the continue to invest, uh, you know, those are just being a competitor. Like I said, you, when you've invested as much as you had, you just don't surrender. 
<laughs> you know, again, I, I, I pay attention to what's being said or, you know, the opinions, and, and that's what y'all get paid to do, you know, to, uh, to go really high with everybody or really down here and get the clickbaits and all that kind of stuff. That's what you do, and whether it's intentional or not, you know, because I know some people say, oh, well, the season's over. You, you know, it's, it's all, it's forgotten. But those guys in that locker room don't think that. And those coaches don't think that, you know. If that's the case, why don't you just end it now? You know what I mean? Because uh, that's what some people report, you know, which is fine. That's they're entitled to do that. But you would think it's not how you live life, or you're gonna live a bad life. You know what I mean? Or a miserable life. So, uh, you know, I think you know there's some similarities, and certainly in the in the win and loss common column. Obviously, you're six, seven, eight, ten, eleven years building the program in a locker room full of a bunch of guys that have been around here not only you know, uh, during that season, but for a long period of time, too. So some of it's the same, and then some of it you're trying to create. Again, you've got, again, half our roster that hadn't been here invested in a really long time. So what does that investment look like for each individual? You know, that's a hard thing to gauge. Uh, but certainly, you know, being consistent with your uh, message and being strong in moments of uh, uh, adversity or loss is, is incredibly important. And, uh, and then again, being able to quantify, uh, you know, what just happened and uh, what needs to take place and the things that um, everybody's got to be responsible and accountable for, I think is important. You have to still, at the end of the day, appeal to the voice of reason when you're in a leadership position. And so you're not got to only be about it, but you also have to be able to bring people along with you uh, and, get, and, and make sure that their mindset is where it needs to be. But again, our guys have, have again worked incredibly hard. Uh, none of us, have, this is not what any of us wanted, but uh, here, here's where it is. And, and again, you know, I be still believe in our guys, you know, their mindset, their toughness, their attitude, their willingness to continue to fight and work and finish what you started. You know, that's what life's all about. And um, certainly that's what uh, this season's all about. But it, for a lot of reasons, for uh, one, for them to, you know, your trademark should be your effort, you know, your best, uh, giving it everything you got. That should be a, each and every one of the guys' uh, uh, trademark is, is, and that's what we talk about being completely and totally committed to doing your best. You know, you can count on me. I'm dependable, I'm accountable, I'm reliable. Uh, and, and, and so uh, that's what that looks like. And I think it's important that, you know, now, you know, more than ever that our guys, and there's been some guys that have had a lot of success. You know, sometimes the more successful you are, the, the easier it is for you to lose sight of all the little things it took for you to build a foundation of success too. And you gotta continue to be mindful of, and again, as we building our foundation, it's still about the little things. Just like that, at the end of the day, we walked off the field on the wrong side of it, and it was about the little things. A whole bunch of little things, you know, that, that can make a big difference, you know, if you get, uh, you know, one or two of them right. And, um, and so that's the margin, you know, that this game uh, can punish you for. Thanks, Brent. Mm -hmm. Come over to here, Jesse. Hey, Brent, you just touched on this a little bit, but you talked after the game about, you know, the team having effort, but just needing to have a little bit more discipline when it came to penalties and, and stuff. It's like effort that. with technique. You know, that's the formula for success. That's part of it is effort with technique. So if it's the, it's the kickoff where they bring it out to the, you know, the 40-yard line, you know, we're supposed to set the edge on that. We've done a good job of setting the edge. But one time you decide I'm not going to set the edge and go outside the block, and you come inside the block when you're supposed to go outside the block, all your help's inside, and you go inside, and then they run it up the sideline. Next thing you know, they got momentum. They've cr they flipped the field. Uh, instead of pinning them inside the, you know, the 18-yard line, which we should have, which is a give or take a almost a 30 percent difference in the opportunity to score, we let them out to the 40. Those are the that's effort with technique. Smoking down the field, I come inside. I'm supposed to stay outside. Everybody's counting on him to do his job, and we didn't do that. That led to a touchdown. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, so we had you know a few of those. You got to be effort with technique. We're in the B gap. Well, you got to, hey, man, there's technique to it. You can't go down the middle of the guy. You got to strike him. You got to get your hands on him first. You got to get pinned into the ground, and you got to keep your inside arm and leg free. And if you don't, you, you, they're going to run in the B gap. And that's what they did on fourth and one. You know, it's effort with technique. How important are these, these last three games?
times, you know, maybe establishing some good habits when it comes to stuff like that. And how much does that have to be played? Yeah, well, these three games are no more important than the other games. And uh, but we, the past is the past. And so, again, you know, the best units, the best players at in any sport, uh, the best. Uh, you know, CEOs, you know, if there's something, they're consistent. And so developing a, a foundation of consistency is what it's all about. You know, we don't want to have a great year this year and then, you know, in two years, you know, win two games. You know, you, the best programs are one that have sustainability and longevity and, you know, consistency is what that's all about. And that's the hardest thing. Just like I said, having uh, long-term success, sometimes people start thinking that it's about them or they lose sight of all the little things that it took foundationally to create that success, you know, the things that success takes. So, um, uh, you know, these last three games are very important, you know. Um, and just all the things I just said, finishing what we started, again, uh, our trademark for each and every player and coach needs to be about everyone being their best and the best that they're capable of being. You know, no more, no best. Not to be the best, to be their best. And so the investment needs to be their best. The focus needs to be their best. Uh, the output needs to be their best. And so it's important to build momentum, to finish the season strong, give us a chance to uh, go to a bowl game. And, uh, and again, build momentum into the offseason as well. There's, that's a, that can be a real thing. It doesn't have to be, but it can be a very real thing as you're, again, uh, foundationally uh, trying to, uh, you know, do things the right way. You know, we lost in, in 2000 uh, or in uh, 1999, we lost our last game, right, to Ole Miss. You guys remember that, right? Field goal to win the game. Uh, opening uh, the last kickoff, Deuce McAllister takes it to whatever the 50 to get a couple first downs, kick to get the, the field goal to win. You know that could you know you say well we didn't we didn't finish the right way then right, but we go and we go 13 and 0, a hard 13 and 0. It wasn't easy, and there's nothing easy about it, right? And throwing a, a fade route uh, to big old six five tied in uh, Oklahoma State that won three games that year, and we we escaped you know by a score, you know. Even though we went 13 and 0, won the national championship, you know there's uh, nothing's easy about the game. So these the last three games are really important. Um, again, there's there's some guys will be playing their last uh, their last season here, and and again you you want them to have a, a sense of pride about being a part of of, of establishing something that's bigger than uh, themselves. And uh, whether that's a new era or again you know long term success, I believe that's what we're doing. Uh, playing the long ball and uh, doing things the right way and recruiting the right kind of people and 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 you know for us right now we don't have a locker room full of guys that um, uh, that have uh, been here a long time. Some of the most experienced players we have are guys that just transferred in here in the last uh, year or so. So, but they haven't spent four or five years. You know what you want to establish is uh, a locker room full of guys that have, that have been here and have played a long time. So. The best teams that um, we've all been a part of are ones that you, where you have uh, both sides of the ball, where you got uh, you know uh, lots of guys that have started three and four, maybe even a fifth year, you know, or, uh, or at least that fifth year guy. He's been here through the same staff, through the same system, uh, and you know, and there are great players in front of him. He finally gets his shot. You know, right now we don't we don't have that to build on, uh, but. Um, you know, looking, you know, again, how to finish the year and how to build the, uh, you know, the, the going into the off season, you know, the right way. I think it's important that we, uh, you know, we we continue to to make an in incremental improvement and 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 again focus on again the things that we can control. And if that's pre-snap penalties. If that's again, uh, you know, protecting the football. Um, uh, you know, those are things right there that you know, obviously, especially the turnover margin that. Uh, determine the you know winning and losing. I think 26 of maybe the top 29 teams in the country are on the right side of it from a turnover margin standpoint. You know, we'll all have winning records. Uh, the teams that are in the uh, you know the bottom half of uh, college football. You know, a lot of the losing teams it's because they're on the on the on the wrong side of the turnover margin. If you look at the Big 12, I think it would be indicative of that. I think. Uh, Kansas State, maybe it's like plus, maybe they're plus nine. Uh, I think then Kansas is maybe plus eight, and then TCU's like plus seven. Uh, we're at plus one, and the teams are at the bottom or on the wrong side of the turnover margin. So, 
you know, we're going to need to do the things that, you know, the, the plan uh, to win doesn't change these last three weeks. It, uh, that takes what it takes, too. And, and so, again, the ability to run the ball, the ability to stop the run, the ability to win the turnover margin and, again, be the least penalized team is, uh, you know, is what it's about. Yeah, Brent. Weekly captains wasn't something any of us had really been had been accustomed to. Mm -hmm. Has it led to the results that you were hoping for? And is there still a plan to name permanent ones as we get further down the road? Yeah, after the uh, regular season's over for our last you know several weeks of of uh, our season for post season play, yeah, we're trying to develop leadership and and uh, you know promote guys to, uh, the opportunity to show whether or not they can lead, show them how to lead. And again, that's what coaching's all about. Again, and that's what trying to have the right type of locker room's all about. Uh, you know, not where uh, you got, you know, three or four guys, that's your only leaders you got. I want a whole locker room full of leaders. And the only way they become leaders is, is trying to put them in a leadership position. So you do that one experience at a time, one conversation at a time. And so that's what that's about. And, and we will do that. Uh, players will vote on that, you know, at the end of the regular season. The role Julio Brooks take on as kind of a playmaker. You spent years trying to stop those guys. Is there anyone he reminds you of, and, and what are the elements that make a guy like him so effective in that role? Um, I'm not sure about comparing him to somebody else, but uh, love how he's created uh, value for himself uh, through his opportunities. You know, a lot of guys uh, want to complain about whatever role that they don't have or the opportunities that they don't have, and then when the opportunities for them to to uh, to step up and, and be a contributor to come they they miss the opportunity because they're not ready for it or they're in the wrong you know state of mind and for him uh, he's been a great teammate uh, he's come to work every day whatever opportunity he's given he's he's uh, he's come through you know he's delivered uh, he's made the most of his opportunity which has created more and more confidence in him and uh, you know he's 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 done a lot of the tough stuff that we've seen him do uh, from blocking to uh, a lot of the tough running uh, after the catch uh, that everybody loves to see. You see tremendous will and fight and toughness and competitiveness when you watch Jaleel play. And uh, he's been, you know, one of our more consistent players, you know, all year. So I've been really, really proud of him. When a guy has to kind of get the ball in different places, you've found creative ways to get the ball in his hands. He has the skill set. Is there a mental element, too, that's added on to that for him? Um, I think, you know, being competitive, you know, just having tremendous will, uh, you know. I think he's one of those guys. His will is is better than his skill, and his skill's good. Uh, but I think when you watch him play, you see that. I think you see that with Drake Stoops uh, as well. Um, but uh, that's what I see with him. Just a, a guy that, uh, that plays with great heart and great toughness. Uh, and again, he's been he's made the most of all of his opportunities. James, Grant, when you're five and four and people start looking at your defense and your defense doesn't get off the field in the game. People don't always see positive things or they don't see things uh, that you see in your defense and when you look at individuals. When you look at down, when you look at guys that you feel like you can build this defense around, what do you see and what do you see out of this defense moving forward? Yeah, I mean, again, I see a defense that doesn't have a lot of experience, so uh, there's going to be some ups and some downs. you got one guy uh, that's that's been here that started a bunch of games and that's Deshaun. Uh, Deshaun's started for four years. Um, after that, you know, you just go up and down the roster and you you see a bunch of guys that they're they're still learning how to play the game. That's part of the the growth process. That is not a a, a fun thing for anybody to be a part of because uh, uh, it's one thing to have three or four new guys. It's a whole other thing when you. Uh, when you got a whole bunch of new guys, uh, and then they're all learning the same stuff, you know, at the same time. But you know, Reggie, Reggie is, uh, you know, he's been a he, he not he just ba barely a one game start or one year starter. Uh, you know, Marcus Stripling is a senior and he started two games in his career. You know, Jordan Kelly started one game in his career. Uh, Jalen Red Redmond is not he you know hadn't been a two year starter yet. Uh, Jeffrey Johnson is a transfer. He's your other most experienced player. Uh, Isaiah Coe started five games in his career. You know, these are guys who are playing like, like, like freshman snaps. Ethan Downs started nine games, not, not, not a year. 
Uh, Jonah Lulu, again, another transfer, more experienced guy. He hasn't been a two-year starter yet. Uh, you know, David Awebu started less than, you know, he's a year and a half starter. Uh, you know, Danny Stutzman still in his first year, still a rookie. Again, just talked about Deshaun Jaden Davis. Uh, this is his second full-time year as a starter. 22 games now he's started. Uh, Billy Bowman, you know, he's whatever it is, eight or nine games, you know, not not a, not a year. Uh, Key Lawrence, I think it's eight games. He's been an eight-game starter. Uh, these are all guys starting for us now, you know. Justin Royals, he's been here for six years. He, you know, this will at the end of this year, he'll be a two-year starter. Okay, and um, you know, Woody Washington, less than two years. You know, these are some of the older guys. So with that, again, I'm not making excuses. I'm just calling it how it is. You got a bunch of our best unit is our most experienced, and that's our our offensive line. That's been the most consistent unit all year. And and then you got a quarterback that's you know been a you know three plus year starter. So. You know, when they see the defense, you see it very inconsistent. You know, you see four games of pretty good play and, and uh, a lot that hadn't been good. And, um, you know, the ups and the downs. And again, the, uh, you had, you know, two games that we lost against two good football teams, Kansas State and Baylor. It comes down to the last drive of the game and we, we can't make the play. Can't make it on third and 16. And, um, and we can't make it on fourth and one. Yeah, against two good teams, you know. I love the fight and the competitiveness and the, the willingness to invest. These guys have done that. Uh, but, again, we're, we're, we're not there. We have no foundation, and that's what we're trying to work on right now. So uh, I get it. I watch it every day, you know, and, and I let everybody know, you know. Uh, so we always look at how can we help them, you know. We're not, we're not doing things that are complicated. You know, you got to be able to count to three and sometimes four. One, two, three, four. Now, how do I relate? You know, where do I get lined up? They change the form in motion from two by two to three by one. That's not a, that's not a complicated thing, uh, you know, in, in the big picture. That's not a complicated mindset. Well, you got to change. You can't just stay in one thing when they do, do this to this. There has to be some kind of an adjustment. So, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're barely scratching the surface on the things, um, the depth of, of the playbook right now. So um, is it harder for some people than others? Yeah. Yep. Some of it's youth, and uh, some of it's we're not quite. They're not quite there from a development standpoint yet, you know. So we gotta, we gotta, you know, uh, be mindful and and, and continue to uh, do the things it takes to develop the guys, you know, fundamentals, uh, attitude, mindset, and again, they understand the ability to, uh, you know, this is a game of performance, a game of of execution, and right now we're not executing consistently like we need to. Um, when we do, we're pretty good shape. When we get lined up, make the right adjustment, and get our eyes where they belong, we, we've been pretty solid. Uh, when we don't, we've been we've gotten punished when we're playing a bunch of good teams. The thing about the Big 12, I think that what we've seen through nine games is that this is a pretty, um, uh, this is a pretty uh, good conference, particularly offensively. And so, uh, you know, there's, there's no forgiveness from that standpoint. So, uh, but that being said, you know, um, uh, we we got to work on our consistency, and again, you know, we got to be. Uh, I think that you know a lot of things too is just you know, got to be more physical at the point of attack. I think that goes without saying. And um, and again, we got to do the things that you know uh, that it takes to win. And the number one thing is we can't beat Oklahoma, so uh, got to do a lot of little things uh, better. That's what the coaches are for. All right, Barry. Yeah, Brent, you just said you need to be more physical, and you mentioned that Saturday night after the game. Is is that a case of you need to get bigger, stronger? We need to be more physical than Baylor because that's who we just played, and they were more physical than us. Some of it's, again, they've got, uh, you know, four or five guys up front, played a lot of football, and, and they've, they've been in college uh, a lot longer, and that happens too. And so, uh, or they've been in their system for, for three years. So there, I think all of that plays into that physicality part. And um, so, again, you know, I think, you, you know, there's plenty of guys that uh, we're trying to recruit. I got a guy right now uh, that we're trying to recruit that ain't real big in stature, okay, that plays super physical, uh, super physical. And so I don't think you have to be bigger. You have to play more physical. And some guys, and some of that, so what I'm talking about is that that's a talent too, your ability to strike. You know, timing and your ability to uncoil. You know, that's a 
Uh, there's a there is a talent to that, and you can get guys more physical, uh, certainly by by growth and development and the weight room and uh, the experience and the certainty and the aggressiveness that comes along with uh, playing a lot. Uh, and knowing what you're supposed to do and anticipating um, leads to being more physical. So I just named like 10 things that allow you to be more physical. And uh, but you got a guy, you want to recruit guys that want to run to the fire. I can promise you. Like you got, you can recruit your uh, your problems or um, or again your solutions. And and that's you know, as we recruit, you know, we're looking guys that, that love to hit and love and they can run. You know, those are our two things that are really important. Every coach, when he, when he hits mid-November, wants to have a real sense of improvement, right? That, that this is this we're getting better at this, 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 this. What what would you say that is for for this team? Where are you improving specifically? Well, I've seen consistency on on the investment part, you know, which is where it starts. The work that you got to put into it. So, been really pleased with the investment part, uh, top to bottom, and uh, you know, we were better on third down this last week. Uh, so that was an improvement uh, from the week before. Uh, last two weeks have been pretty good uh, in that standpoint. Um, again, I, I thought uh, again, I think we've been we've been running the football really well uh, all year. Uh, you know, you know, we've been really a good unit, not dropping the football. Marvin had a few. Uh, uh, Braden had one uh, or two against Iowa State, uh, but again, we've done a really good job of catching the football. Uh, you know. Uh, I like how our guys have, again, uh, practiced. Um, I thought we were a little better in the in some of our coverage stuff the last uh, a few weeks. Um, got our hands on some balls uh, the last several weeks. The last three games, you know, there's there's a lot of things that we got better at. Again, I thought we uh, we got whooped in the run game uh, this last week. Okay, let's go to Ryan Chapman. Fourth downs. That you mentioned the converting three or three for Baylor, but on two of those drives, they went straight down the field and scored. How do you find that response mid-drive after giving up a fourth down conversion? How does that change week to week to make sure that you're, you're building into that? Because like Ryan mentioned, with West Virginia Tech, the, the fourth downs aren't going away on your schedule the rest of the year. Yeah, well, I think every every fourth down in some is like a, it's, it's like a, a, you know, a season of its own. I don't think they have to have anything to do with one another. We've had plenty of uh, of, of times this year, plenty. You guys go do, you got all the information, go do the, the work for your story, but uh, where we've responded after giving up a conversion, you know, there's plenty. So uh, last week we didn't, and, and, and we lost by, you know, a field goal. So uh, how do you respond is how you respond to anything. You know, did we do a good job of that? Nope, we didn't. Uh, but we have, so uh, I don't think it's a, you know, it's an every game or every time thing, uh, but let's face it. You know, it's a when when you know the whole stadium is screaming, yelling, and you you give up one of those plays. It's kind of deflating, isn't it? Is that what you're alluding to? It's, it's deflating. Yeah, and and we didn't do a good job responding uh, on those two drives at all. Uh, you know, so another drive we held them to a field goal, but. Second row, Cliff Yeah, uh, Coach, you, you mentioned Drake Stoops earlier um, as one of those guys who does have some experience, has been around for a while, a guy who came here as a walk-on. How critical is it to have a guy like that who walked on, has been around for a long time, works way to being a starter, but also is good off, off the field, as you know, in the classroom, things like that. What does that do for your team? Yeah, you want to have a whole locker room full of guys like that. You just, you know, young people of excellence. Uh, you know, obviously, you want as many guys like that as you can. You know, you help other people learn from them. I think environment uh, is important, and I think people are contagious. So having a, you know, a bunch of guys like that that know how to work, know how to respond, know how to show up with the right attitude every day. Um, you know, uh, what they do off the field is. Same things that they do on the field. Again, autographing all of their work with excellence, and, and Drake has certainly been a great example of that. And, and we want to, we've got you know a bunch of other guys that are committed in the same way. And but uh, we want to continue to uh, nurture that and be a program you know that represents that. And I think that's a 
uh, you know, a great observation, you know, on your part and, uh, and knowing that we want to have a whole locker room full of guys like that. Yeah, Brent, I want to follow up on something you said earlier when you when you said you pay attention to what's said and you mentioned clickbait and opinions and that's okay, you guys can have to, that's your job, whatever. I just wanted to follow up on that and ask about does that affect guys, the team? Does it affect players? Does it affect the way they prepare or the way they see themselves or interact with their other students or anything like that? I, I don't know. You'd have to ask them. What about yourself? Nope. Awesome. Nope. Uh, in terms of the rat poison, if you guys were nine and zero, and everybody was patting them on the back, would that be the same thing? I mean, if if, if you if you know me at all, uh, if you've done any kind of uh, homework, then you're going to know I'm the same guy every single day. And so if 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 we're being really, I've already talked about you know the the seeds of success, how that can be a, a detriment too. You know, uh, you know, you know where people feel like it's, you know, they, they inherit the right to be successful, you know, whether it's a program, uh, whether it's coaches, whether it's support staff, or whether it's the players. Uh, maybe it's, you, you, you know, you've been very successful as a program, then you start recruiting and these guys think they're just going to show up and win and it's all about them and they're the new hot shot recruit. Uh, the things that it takes to be successful over the long haul, I think, you know, what it's all about. So, um, you know, uh, you got to value the little things that it takes to be successful. So, um, would that be the same? You dang right, because everybody will be way up here. You know, either way down here, you know, as low as it can be, or way up here. You know, nothing in between. And for me, I want our program to always be right here. How we do what we do. You know, don't play to a scoreboard. You know, play and compete to a standard. Show up to a standard every single day. Don't doesn't matter what happened line. That's what we talk about. Again, windshield mentality. It's always about what's next. You learn and grow from what happened in the past, but you can't stay fixated on that. It'll paralyze you. And, you know, and so you want guys to stay hungry. You want to stay driven. Uh, you want a, a, a program that's never satisfied, that's always looking for more. Uh, you know, it's always about improvement. Uh, that's, that's the, the, those are foundational things. It doesn't mean you're always going to get it, but the intent needs to be there. That's the key, the, the intent the work that it takes to get there. It doesn't mean you always get the result. And so to me, too many people are always a result. And, you know, y'all go write a story based on the result. Okay, well, here's, the, here's the bottom line, there's the, there's the result. Okay, and, and to me, that's shallow. Okay, even if you're in a result-driven business, that's not what it's about to me and, and to us. And I think to successful people, long-term successful people, it's about all the other stuff. It's not the result is a byproduct of doing everything, being committed, doing all the work, persevering, overcoming, fighting through it, okay, handling success, handling the failure, all of it. You got to do that all within a game. You got to do it from week to week. You got to do it from month to month, year to year. And um, so, uh, whether you're you're nine or no, and in college football playoff talk, and everyone wants to talk about, it, you know what? If if we came out last Tuesday and they said Oklahoma. Top four, you know what? i had been fighting like hell, uh, you know, against that because you hadn't accomplished anything. You know, it takes what it takes. You have to start over again. You know, this week is a season of its own. So whether we're five and four or nine and zero, oh, uh, you know, there's a process in how you compete and play and perform at a really high level. Doesn't mean you're always going to. We had all kinds of issues, uh, whether they're schemes or whether they're players, or whether it's fundamentals or it's being more physical or lack thereof. Okay, we got, you know, we're, we're not where we want to be, but the intent matters. Okay, the work matters. The showing up every day matters. Okay, and that's, again, that's, that's what we're doing right now. And, you know, that's why I have great appreciation, respect, and, and thankfulness for our players, uh, leadership that we do have on this team, you know, because they've done exactly that. Uh, and so are they affected by, by that? If, again, if they allow themselves to be. And I don't, I'm not naive. Again, I know how... Uh, the human being works and you know my job is to be aware of of all of it and then make sure that I do a good job as a leader uh, of of making sure the rest of the leaders I'm just one man but the rest of the leaders are also uh, you know armoring up as well whether you're nine and oh or five and four uh, the journey's hard it's difficult it's challenging 
Um, it's going to have its mountaintop experiences within the season, and it's going to be uh, some tough moments, uh, like when we went to Dallas. And how you handle all of it matters, you know, moving forward in the present moment and certainly uh, in the future. Sooner Scoop HD.